Uh, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe Bufano. Um, I am the school attorney and director of human resources here at OCM BOCES. And uh, Dr. Manning could not make it here today. Uh, he's asked me to be here in his stead, and uh, he apologizes that he couldn't make it. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, that we've had the opportunity um, and the relationship with State Ed that they would be willing to come out to, uh, to Syracuse and to speak to all of you. As I understand it, this is one of the few times that they come out to do this, uh, to speak about uh, the, the coaching requirements and the, and the procedures and some of the changes that are going on. Uh, some housekeeping things before we jump into things. Uh, if you want water, there's water over here. There's coffee and donuts up front. The bathrooms are down the hall, uh, past the receptionist to the right. If you walk down that long hallway, there's bathrooms down there. Um, uh, before we jump into uh, the substance here, I just want to do a couple introductions. Uh, I'm very proud of our regional certification office. Uh, we have two employees that work in that office, and they're, when, you pick, when you call the office, these are the people that you speak to, and they've put this on today. They've initiated this for all of you, and, and, and I'm, uh, they're, they're very, very busy, and uh, they do their best to keep you guys happy and to answer your questions. We have Elaine Leshevsky and Loretta, Loretta Waldron. Thank you. These two work very, very hard for all of you. Um, and so I, I know that when you, you want to hear from say that, so I'm going to introduce, um, we have Ann Jasinski, the Assistant Director at the Office of Teaching and Initiatives, and Daryl Daly here, the Associate for Physical Education. So thank you very, very much for coming. We're very, very appreciative. And I'll hand over to you. Happy to be here today and again if you have any questions feel free to ask us here uh, if we don't know the answer we'll go get it for you try to get it for you and also I'll give you my number 518-474-5922 don't call it too often please but um, <laughs> it usually is ringing um, all day but um, so yeah and then my email is d-a-r-r-y-l dot d-a-i-l-y at nyse.gov. Um, I get a pile of the emails, but I, and again, I'm not looking for more, but obviously sometimes you do have questions and we try to get, you know, I try to get to you as quick as we can. Um, so basically we'll start out, I mean, I, I'm not gonna go into who I am, what I am, but I think some of you guys already know who I am. Um, I've been at State Ed for about 10 years. I've worked as a phys ed teacher, coach, administrator um, for many years, so um, too many. Um, not as normal. Stop. Not as good. Uh, but um, anyway, so um, you know, so been around the block, I guess, a few times. So the first one um, we had, I think, uh, are we switching it or are you guys switching it? I'll do that for you. Okay. So um, on your agenda, if you look at this thing, it says importance of certified coaches. So I think most of you probably know. I mean, the reasons you would have certified coaches, um, you you know, lawsuits. I think a big piece of you know what we do um, as coaches and um, you know leads to that. There's you, you have to have that background. You have to have you know it, just basically there's so many things that can happen as we all know. Um, so I think that's that's a big reason why it's lawsuits. Um, so I'll get into categories of coaching requirements. Um, the first one is the certified PE teachers. Obviously uh, they don't have to take all the courses because a lot of the coursework includes a lot of the information that you would get in the coaching courses. Um, so they would still have to do all the other requirements, as we're all aware. Um, and then for other certified teachers, including pupil personnel, um, they would still have to meet the requirements, right? And um, they also have to take the coaching courses. And, they, and what I always tell the people is, Make sure you keep records, your own records, and make sure that you give it to your AD or your phys ed director or personnel. Um, and I always tell the young kids that especially, make sure that you have a you know, file, binder, whatever. Have that information in case you move to another district. Um, so just have it you know, available. Um, the non-teacher volunteer coaches, they have to have everything. Obviously all the fingerprinting, you know, everything from fingerprinting to school violence prevention to child abuse. All that has to be done for the non-teacher um, 
coach and also volunteers. We always get that question, does a volunteer have to be certified? And we always say yes, because they're still coaching the students. So I always get that one. That was always a big, big to do. <laughs> but um, yes, they're still coaches, still considered coaches if they're volunteers. Um, <clears throat> so I guess I just defined non-teacher, right, versus volunteer. Um, so that's the beginning part here. And you want to get into the next part? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll see me, my glasses will go on and off here because I have a hard time <laughs> reading and uh, going through this. So I am Ann Jasinski. Um, I don't talk with a lot of you because I do a lot of work with the RCOs um, most of the time. And frankly, I like it that way because they can move the paperwork for me and get what we need. Um, so they, you know, they should be your contact in most cases on this. So I just wanted to go through the levels of coaching certificates that are here because it gets a little confusing at times. And this, part of the names on these and why we have like a temporary coaching license and a temporary coaching license first renewal and a, sec or a temporary second through fourth is that the requirements change. So way back when, for the first renewal, we had to see that they were enrolled in the um, course. Philosophy? Wow, gone right out of my mind. That changed. But because of the way TEACH is built, we couldn't change our levels of certificates. So we just kept them, and we changed the requirements. So really your TCL, your TCL first renewal have the same requirements. When you go to the second through fourth, that's when we require the coursework now. And then you get up into your professionals. If somebody has coached for three years or more, they can go to the professional. And then after three years, then they just keep doing professional renewals, okay? There's a couple of things that we get into when we're um, in any of the, if somebody's held a temporary, in regulation there's actually um, a piece that says, um, and I'll give you an example to start out with. So somebody had a temporary coaching certificate back in 1995. Have it coached since then. If they wanna come in now to get their first renewal, they have to have completed all three of those courses. The regulations require that if there's a gap of five years or more, then we have to see all completed coursework. So, you know, that TEACH doesn't always reflect that. We've made a change so it does a little bit better now but we'd be looking for their certificates of completion for all three of the courses. Um, this does hold up some of them because they don't realize that they have to do that. Um, and that would go either way. They could use either the NHFS pathway or the regular individual evaluation. But then if it's the NHFS, we have to see both certificate so they have to have gotten the AIC and the CIC and that would mean they've completed all their coursework okay and to go from the temporary to the professional a person has to have coached three seasons under a valid coaching certificate this doesn't mean they have to have held three certificates as all of you know, certificates are issued the day that we teach system issues. So in some cases, a certificate may go across two sport seasons because they expire based on, we have two expiration dates. It's either gonna be 131 or 831. So if a certificate goes across two seasons, and they tell us they've coached, we allow that because we're looking for three seasons worth of coaching under temporary certificates. 
Um, that's the thing that's come up a lot lately since we changed the rules about the issue date of those certificates. Um, we do have cases where a person will only have two temporaries, but they've met the three seasons and can go right to the professional. Okay? Um, to go from the <laughs> professional to a professional renewal. So they had their professional. It's been three years. The professional renewal says they, we have to see evaluations for three years. Um, there are many cases where somebody holds a professional and may coach one year, may coach two years, but doesn't coach all three, that's fine. They just need to send us a letter or an email to say that they did not coach all three years and they can get their temporary, or their, excuse me, their professional renewal, okay? Um, some of them get very worried that, well, I didn't coach one year, what do I do now? My certificate expires. So it's a case of they either have to have coached or they have to tell us they didn't coach, okay? Um, so the next one on this, were there any questions on that? Okay, the next one is timeline of coaching requirements. And this gets into a little bit of appointments within the district versus what we consider with certification. Okay, so this gets a lot, a lot of this I already covered because you go from your initial appointment and this is about the five year rule so, and it doesn't have to be the initial appointment in your district. It's the first time they had a temporary certificate. And it could have been many, many years ago. And just meaning they have to complete the coursework. Okay. I'm not sure about this clarification of repeat of coaching courses. Elaine, do you know what that one was? So when, and when you talk about the five-year lapse, I think that maybe there was some uh, question out there as to whether um, they have to repeat the courses or will you accept old courses? We accept old courses. Can you clarify the theory and techniques for them as far as old they have to have that score? Yes. So way back when the theories and techniques were not, I can't say they were all not sport specific, but we see certificates come in without a sport on them. And if they took a theories and techniques and it was not sport specific, they have to complete the sport specific piece, okay? Which is like, what is it? Sections five through seven or something like that? Yeah, and the other part I was gonna add to that too, just so you're aware, with the NFHS courses, they don't, they don't have every single sport. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, okay. Um, so they would take, there's a basic one that they could use for, you know, sport. But yeah, we had to do that because they don't have every sport in the NFHS courses. Okay? Well, we haven't got that far yet as yeah. far as having someone have that second round, you know? Yeah. So if you run into that, just, you know, again, if you have a question with it, yeah, just call me or whatever. But that does happen. We've had a few, you know, cases of that. Okay. And can you also clarify, like, if they started with the philosophies, they had the philosophies, but now they switched to the NFHS. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can, I can okay. Yeah, I can cover that. I mean, basically, we've had questions like with the, the new NFHS approach. Um, some of the coaches started with, say, principal philosophy course. Um, we have been allowing them to start the NFHS course, even if they have taken the principal philosophy course. Um, that has happened, like I said, where, you know, you know we, we encourage them to continue, you know, with the same track of principal philosophy, health science, theory, technique. However, like I said, there are cases where somebody may decide to switch to do it all online, you know, with the NFHS. They might find they can't get to, you know, the classes, so they decide to do it on, all online. So that has happened. Um, Yep. So anybody have any questions about the AIC versus CIC? 
Uh, most of you guys have probably been familiar with this, but some people, when they're new to it, they're like, what is AIC? What's CIC? You know, American International College? Or I don't know. But it, it's, you know, but basically it's a level one and level two. So when we went through the NFHS courses, there's four courses that are level one, and level two, I think there was like seven, something like that. Um, so basically they, they would receive a level one national certification and a level two national certification, but they call it AIC and CIC, okay? So I just wanted to make sure I clarify that because some people didn't know that. Yeah. The next one's grandfathering. Just to clarify. Yes. So oh, sure. If someone starts in one pathway, they are now allowed to go to the other pathway. Yes. yes. Yeah, but we have been encouraging them what to continue. Uh, we allowed it from the beginning yeah. for certification purposes. No, you did not. Yeah. You told us that they had to stay in one pathway. They started one pathway, they had to stay in that pathway. So this is something new. Well, they, so they can. If they take the theories, and they want to take the CIC, they're okay to do that. But what you see on TEACH is one pathway or the other, okay? But the AIC is equal to the, got the right one. AIC is equal to the theories, philosophies. I'm yeah, sorry. principal philosophy. I knew in my mind what I was saying, but it didn't come out right. We change pathways. You can still change a pathway. Yep. Yeah, do great. No, you can do grandfathering. We're Talk about grandfathering. Just to stay on the right, the, the other path, though. It's yes. If they oh, can, yeah, they we can. would encourage them. I mean, but if, obviously, okay. it's, it's easier it's for us. It's easier for them to go yeah. because they can take these okay. online or something, and then they can do that. Part of this question might also Yeah, because it's still the same sport. Yeah. And you might want to repeat this in the back. Okay. So that was about um, if they go, so they had started down the pathway of taking the courses versus the NHFS. If there was um, a requirement that they were starting a new five year period in that particular sport. And my answer to that is a sport's a sport. It doesn't matter what pathway you go. That temporary was issued and you've got that five year period to go through regardless of which pathway you go. Okay? So I'll let you do grandparenting. Oh, thank you. Grandparenting? It's <laughs> grandparenting, not grandfathering yeah. anymore. She's a, she's a grandparent. Um, so anyway, so the grandfather clause uh, we have determined, I think, that probably somebody who's in this particular situation would probably be in their 80s. Is that correct? Well, I don't think all of them quite, but... I don't know, maybe 70, I don't know, 74. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not good with math, but I know they're, they're a little bit older, you know. But, um, but anyway, so they, they would um, basically would not have to do anything. Up, do anything. I mean, they have to have their first aid CPR and CPR&D, of course. But, um, you know... The way they put it in there was they would not have to do all the other things. Didn't have to show us the courses. Yeah, no. so that's that's what that is. For um, that district, right? I'm sorry? For that district, right? Yeah. No, it applies to any district. Any district. Any district? Yep. yep. So that's they grandfathered them in. Just think about no matter where they are, what they're doing, they were okay. So if they were working at District A and was grandfathered through, but now this year I decided to go work for District B and they still grandfather. Yeah, but there's nothing that says that District B can't say, no, I want you to get a certificate. Because a district can set higher requirements than, than the ranks do. So a district can set higher requirements. A district could turn around and say, but I want to see a coaching certificate. 
And that goes, you know, that that is a typical across anything with a district. They can set higher requirements and certification. Yes. Just before we leave that five year period, in five years from the time they start, we can can they still apply for an extension if they're taking a year or two off? <coughs> Yes, we to finish to the before. coursework. Yes. yes, they can. Okay. Yeah. And usually, um, I don't get into the the only parts I get into with extensions and equivalence reviews. That's that's usually you know the part that I take care of. Um, so if you have any of those things like equivalent, you, you probably know that. But if there's any equivalent reviews or extension reviews, um, that's what I take care of. But in and terms they have of, to fill out a. Uh, yeah, a you have to fill out you. the application. I just don't take a bunch of information. I, you know, if you do the application, I'll take a good look at it. You know, but we have to determine that stuff too, like the extension piece that gets a little tricky sometimes. You know, and that's usually when I get a hand involved. Yep. <laughs> we have one we're looking at now. You know, it's a guy who came, started, stopped, started, stopped. You know, it's all the, you know, there's all kinds of breaks in there. That gets a little tricky, but um, <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah. So if you have any of those things, send them to me. In those cases, you're accepting a, um, a copy of a transcript? Yeah, I'll take uh, transcripts, yes. Um, you know, usually for me, for me to take the stuff I need, um, what do I need? Um, yeah, transcripts, um, you know, any, any, yeah, that's probably. Maybe a photocopy. Of a yeah, photocopy's yeah. fine. I'll take it, you know, you don't need to send a hard copy. You can send it to me, you know what I'm saying? You know, just scan it, <coughs> email it. Yeah, it's a lot easier. I mean, I got to print it all out and stuff, but it is easier for you. Um, harder for me because I got to print everything out. But I do, you know, like I said, I, it's easier for me to see it. I take a good look at it, and it, it takes a while, but it, we figure it out. Um, anyway, so that's how that works. <laughs> uh, yeah, that helps too. Yes, that I, a lot. Yeah, because sometimes, I mean, I'm not going to know every course that somebody took. Um, yeah, some of the courses, some of these colleges have different names for them, you know, so it makes it hard sometimes. Um, sometimes I have to call the college up and say, is that the same thing? You know, um, I've had to do that with a few. Um, it's kind of a pain, but I do it, you know, because I want to make sure that they that it's correct. Um, yeah, so the next one, is there any more questions with that? Um, the next one's coaching documentation. I'm not really yeah. Sure that, but, so I, I'm going to do a little bit about this because this has been a stumbling block. So we are pushing that we need to know who that person absolutely is on any documents that get sent to us. So if it's a one of the course completions or a CPR or a first aid, we need identifying information. You know, first of all, we may have six Jerry Smiths. And I want to know, oh, I'm sorry, here, which Jerry Smith it is. And so I need to see on the documents that come to us, which are documents that come to your RCOs, that that person's last four digits of their social security number and their date of birth are on that document. It's not our ownership to decide who that is, okay? We need to make sure that when we get the information, we know who that person is. And this also goes to if my name is John and I have a certificate in Jack, we're going to kick that out and say sorry. We don't have anybody with that name in Teach with that identifying information. And this has been historically a problem. We've seen it more on like coaching courses, DASA, workshops, all of those that people use their nicknames instead of using their name that they use in teach and when we go to look up a teach record we're going by the name that's on that document that we're looking at and that name has to match that last four of the social and the date of birth okay about a year ago yeah, we sent out new templates to those of you that offer any of the courses um, whether it's one of the the courses or the first aid or the CPR for coaches, that the template included a spot for the last four digits of the social security number and the date of birth. And this is why we did that, to get identifying information on that. 
So when people are taking the CPR or first aid courses that are like from American Red Cross or any of that, that particular listing, that applicant needs to put their own identifying information on those certificates. So they're taking responsibility and saying that it belongs to them. Okay? And that should, if you're collecting all of those documents, you know, at, at the district level and then forwarding them, make sure you've got identifying information on them and make sure the name is consistent through all the documents. Okay? And the other thing with the first aid CPR courses, um, make sure, what was I going to say? Just making sure that they um, take the one that's on the list. That's what I was going to say. Because what I'm finding is I'll get a call and say, well, I took adult first, you know, I'm like, okay. Did you check and see where it is on the pages? The very first page is first aid, CPR AD, and then the second page of the ones we have listed is just CPR AD. I, you'd be amazed how many times I have to explain that, probably a week. I, but anyway, so, you know, once you know that, it's pretty clear. And like I said, I, I'll get that question all the time. What about adult first? Yeah, no, that's only for CPR AD, okay? So um, just so you, you guys know that, please spread that message because, like I said, I get calls all the time on this. It, it, yeah, it's kind of tiring. But, they, you know, they, they don't get it. But um, I think most of you guys probably do. So... You know, if you could spread that message, that'd be great. Yes? Question about the first aid courses. Um, I'm finding it very difficult to find the first aid courses. Yes. Um, I've asked in the past for the state to start looking at some online options. Yep. Are we moving forward with any online options at this point? Um, well, I think there are. There's some that are hybrid courses that we have taken. We obviously don't take all online. Um, but there are some hybrid ones. Are they listed here? Uh, some of them are, yes. And the other piece too, I, I'll just give you this you know, spiel because I've talked to the, um, the American Red Cross people at the national level and the regional level. Um, and I, I may have told some of you guys this before, but the responding to emergency one is, is in Albany, Syracuse, and Buffalo one time a year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I found that out. Um, and I asked them if they could expand that because, you know, we need it for coaches. Um, I mean, the answer I got was, you know, whatever. You know, they try. But um, I just want you to be aware of that, that particular course, if you're wondering why, you know, you get that. And that's why I always tell people, try to take the ones that we approve, you know what I mean, the, the, the agencies and schools, because I think that they'll have more success at finding one there. Um, and I always tell them if they, if they need it in a hurry, you know, maybe go to one of the athletic training groups or EMTs and things like that. Um, obviously, the schools are going to do it most time, three times a year. You know, so I try to steer them to that versus looking at, you know, ASHI. And, I mean, but, you know, if they have to, they can look at those. But they're usually, that's what they do. They steer right to American Red Cross and they say, I can't find it. Well, yeah, so that's why. I just want you to be aware. But um, I am talking to them again. I'm going to call them again and see if they can get more of you know that course um so that's that's the answer to that i just want you to make sure you know you you know why okay Darryl, yes speaking of the state approved agencies when is that list going to be updated again um well i'll give you i think you i tried in the beginning when i first started the job to do it too quick right and everybody's like why are you changing it so fast right so then you make, you know, then you wait a couple of years and they're like, how come you're not doing it, you know, well, more I often. Know because like our coaching certificates aren't being issued if they're not on that list. And I still see that one of my districts that was approved last April, yep. and we talked to you last month about it, still isn't on this list. Okay. So if you don't see it on the list, <laughs> please send me an email again. I'll make sure the person gets it, you know, to the SED website. Um, I can pretty much, she's pretty good. She'll get them in probably a week or two, usually, you know. But I have a person right now, I'm getting them to. So if you're, you know, please do. And I'll try to get that to her right away. So if you're, um, can yes. you just go through for the districts that are here that if they believe they should be on the list, how to get yeah. on the list? Yeah, if you, if you find that you're not on the list, I won't get into the reason why we're not on there, but if you 
if you offer the approved CPR and first aid courses, yes. more so than the other ones, yes. right? Yes. Um, then send it to me. I will get them on the list as long as they're, you know, it's appropriate, okay? You know, as long as they're, you've been in there in the past, send me a letter that you were approved and, yeah, so please do. Um, and I'll get you on there as quick as possible, you know, that I can. Um, and get it back into play. And then we'll make sure, the other thing is make sure your templates have that Social Security and, uh, yeah, for, uh, birthday. Because, yeah, the new <laughs> templates. Yeah, because I get, because they're, they're turning them away if they don't have that. Okay? Yeah. Is, uh, is first aid, first aid is not specific to coaches, correct? First aid, what? CPR and AED, I'm reading this, this note in the room at the bottom. It says, SED is not required the following to show separate certification of first aid to coach, however, a valid CPR certificate will be required. Is that saying that first aid does not have to be specific to coaches? It could just be the general first aid course? No. Mm -hmm. That's uh, talking about licensed people. Yeah, EMTs. On there. So what we're saying is officers. because of them holding whatever they hold and being employed, <laughs> we accept that they've done their first aid. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. And they have to show, I'm sure Aaron would say this, they have to show that they're a current police officer. Yeah, we require validation of employment. Yeah. Okay. If a card comes in on those issues prior to the templates, but it's still valid, you can still have the Yes, providing the applicant writes their social security last four and their name of birth time. Any cut up they wrote it after We're accepting them so long as they have identifying information on it. We're encouraging any of the providers to make sure you use your new templates. And this is another thing. If you are a provider and don't have the new template, you can either email Daryl or myself and we will get you that new template. Because I know when we sent it out, there were some emails that got kicked back and we just, you know, did the best we could on that. Um, as far as the exemption issue, uh, here, if we have somebody who is a, say, a retired police officer, and he comes to me with an update for first aid now, is that accepted? Or does he still need an initial? Even though he was a police officer, he No, he can do an update provided that that update is one of the approved courses. So he, as long as he's had an old dad or something that was put into the system, he can do it. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this goes to uh, another thing. Sometimes you have a coach that's coming to your district for the first time, and they've taken an update course, um, whether it was the SED approved update course, or it's a, re is it a review course from American Red Cross or something. We won't accept that as the first certificate we see. So if somebody gives you an update and it's their first certificate, you need to get the original course that they took. You need to see that original certificate and it needs to be submitted. We need to know that at one time, they took the full one of the approved courses. Now we have lists back to 2010 of what were approved uh, American Red Cross, um, all of those guys. So we can go back and look and see what the courses were. Um, if somebody, if you're talking to a coach or something, you know, make sure you tell them if this is the first temporary they're going for. Even if they've taken other courses, they're smarter to take the full course and not the update. Because then it's an easier and it just moves its way right through. And the other thing is they won't take challenge courses. Right. They will take review courses. So American Red Cross has a, and this is more an internal procedure than it is anything else. We verify that what the American Red Cross certificate says is the actual course that they took. What we find from time to time, and Red Cross confirmed this, is sometimes the instructor puts in the wrong course title that gets printed out on their certificate. 
So we always use that little number that's down in the right hand corner to go on to the American Red Cross site and verify what course they took. And it may be different than what it says on that form. So that sometimes we're kicking them out. Now, it may have been an instructor error and they go back to the instructor and the instructor has the ability to go back into the American Red Cross site and put in the right course and get it to print out correctly. So there are times that, you know, we've gone back to people with, you look at it and it looks perfect and it matches and when we run that code, it's not what that course was that that person took. Okay? Do you those codes added to this? Pardon me? we have those codes added to this? That's just on the American Red Cross ones. Right. And we also know what they are so we can... The code. No, it, code is an individual code. So each person, when they complete a course, gets a code. Is that a yeah, it's not anything that goes on, that is, the course doesn't have a code. What gives that code is that person and that course, and they get an individual ID code. Yeah, it'll be on, usually it's on the certificate. The name of the course doesn't match up. And it tells you right on the, the certificate that you see from American Red Cross, it says go to redcross.org, or whatever it is, verify, and you put that code in there and it can show up different. You know, we've talked to American Red Cross about this, and you know, they said they were gonna do a little bit more outreach to their instructors. And that's what I think I know what you're talking about. When our trainer puts in the codes, because we do our CPR at our place, and the instructors put it in, that if the certificate's print fine, but that code that was there is wrong, so I don't know what code, when it was printed, it was wrong. So when we sent it to you guys, we had to find a new code, but I don't know how, we don't know how to find a new code. Then that's so where you need to talk to American Red Cross. Do you have to call them and tell them what lies the code wrong? Or? Yeah, say, we put this code in, this is what your system is now showing because that's an issue with that. And the American Heart Association, they, I've been seeing some certificates come in with a barcode on them now too. And they have a little confirmed they can move on. Okay. We haven't put into procedure to deal with that yet. Okay. Oh, you want me to do it? one last thing on that? Just, just remind me of one thing. Just like even the American Heart Association course and the, you know, like I said, the adult one. And the reason they don't, they don't meet the hour requirements, if anybody asks you, that's why they're not on the first aid list. They might say first aid, but they don't meet the hour requirements. I get that question again, probably two, three times a week. So yeah, it doesn't meet the hour requirements. That's why they're not on the first aid list, okay? Yep. Okay. This is the next one we're kind of working together on. It's talking about district responsibilities for record keeping. This pertains more to your teacher coaches, where you have to collect information to verify that your teachers have completed the required courses and you retain that in your files. Those are not anything that come to the state because we're not issuing certificates on that. But the teacher needs to have the appropriate, and that means the same CPR and the same first aid that everybody else does. Has to be one of those approved sponsors. And they have to complete the same courses or do the NHFS pathway. And the concussion is not on the system. Right, and the concussion is not a requirement for certification. So you're supposed to retain it for everybody, the concussion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every two years. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that is, you know, another one that the district has to retain that for everybody. Did you set a time frame for retention of those records? Any of the documents for the teacher coaches? Are they supposed to hang on them for five years? Or uh, no. We, did, years? we never did that. Okay. If you have a coach still in your district, you need to make sure that you have their documents, though. Absolutely. Okay. And most districts have a records retention for personnel records. 
And to me, that would fall into that personnel records retention. Yeah, because okay. a shelf life, like it, it stated, a shelf life I think is seven years, right, in the file. On some things. We got down to three on others. <laughs> yeah, microfeed, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's seven years. But like I said, a lot of things I try to keep longer. So my files are too big you now. But, you know, but that's usually, that's the shelf life I know for state ed. <laughs> yep. So let me go to the shelf life for OTI at the moment. So we've gone to scanning. So if any of your people have sent in one of the courses, philosophies or, you know, any of those, once they've sent it in once now, we're going to have it on file and we don't need to see it again unless it's theories and techniques and it's in a different sport than what was already sent. So we don't need to keep getting those things over and over again. Once we've got them, we're good to go now. Okay? Can I ask you a question? Um, all of our teachers, are, did every teacher always take child abuse and save when they would become a teacher? So we don't, I don't have those kind of certificates, correct? Right. So anybody in the 1992, 91? So child abuse came into place in 1991. Anybody that had applied on or after that date okay. had to take child abuse. Okay? Mm -hmm. 2001 came the same. <coughs> okay? Again, anybody that applied for a certificate on or after that date. Okay. DASA came in December 31st, 2013. So anybody that applied on or after that date has taken DASA, okay? Um, what we do, well, have heard lately is, if you're looking in the TEACH system, you're not always going to see the certificates listed down on the bottom if per se the, the teacher that you have that's gonna be a coach completed a New York State teacher ed program. You won't see those certificates listed down so that you get that confirmation that they did it. That is based on the recommendation from the college. And this is all on our website. So that if a student completed a New York State teacher education program, and we've seen this with, you know, teachers come and got a provisional certificate and then never came back and got their permanent and now they're coaching, okay? We look at when they were recommended. If their graduation date was on or after one of those dates we just talked about, 1991 for child abuse or 2001 for SAVE or 2013 for DASA, that was included as part of their program. So we know by looking at that recommendation date what workshops they would have completed. I just while I'm talking DASA, I need to give you a heads up. There is a DASA work group going on. The DASA workshop may be changing, okay? Don't know how, don't know when. It's always gonna be prospective, okay? So just if you hear any rumblings coming through at all, there is a work group going on. It's been meeting for three months, four months. And they're talking about, you know, is the six hours enough? You know, is the content correct? And what's going on? So that just may be changing in the future, and everybody will get notified about that if it does. And just going back to the child abuse and um, school violence, a lot of times for my districts, I'll tell them that they want to have a copy for the teachers in their file. I tell them, oh, they look on the transcript, they're usually. You know, nine times out of ten, you're going to see right on the transcript that they completed the child abuse or school violence. So just throw a copy of the transcripts in their coaching file. And while you're talking to DASA, can you reiterate um, about DASA for teacher coaches, especially that were, you know, held certificates prior to 2013? I get the question all the time. Do teachers need to take the full six-hour DASA workshop? Okay. Good question. And can you repeat the question? Yep. Yep. So the question is, if you have a certified teacher that was had applied for certification on or before December 31st, 2013, for coaching, do they need to take the DASA workshop? And the answer to that is no. 
they need to take your school DASA requirement, but those teachers have no requirement to take that full-blown six-hour DASA workshop to be a coach. But the district can require it, correct? Yeah, the district can require it if they want to, okay? And unless that teacher comes in to get a new certificate from us, they're not held to that DASA requirement. <laughs> and that would have been the same with the save in 2001 or the child abuse. Yes? Um, just with the whole DASA thing and possibly revamping it, is there ever going to be a possibility of that being offered online? That's one of the big issues I run into with very few DASA certified trainers in our area. You, you hire these coaches last minute sometimes and those courses just aren't available. So is that something that's been talked about, like they do for the child abuse and for project save? That is one of the items that's under discussion. As far as I have heard, it's probably not moving to a full online. But it is be it's in the work group to discuss. But is there a reasoning behind that? I mean, I don't know. I, yes. I can go and get certified to be a school district administrator online. I never went to Stony Brook once, but the DASA training, for some reason, that's like the pinnacle of all this stuff. It just seems kind of silly yeah. to me. So the work group that, so this was legislated and the work group that worked on the DASA requirement said it is very important for people to get together and talk through their issues with prejudice and you know all of the different types of um, students and nationalities and you know genders and all of this. So they felt very strong that there had to be that three hour in person piece. So I don't know where they're gonna shake out with this new work group. So is there a way to get onto that work group or? <laughs> <laughs> well, they've only got two more meetings. So they were, I mean, the work group is 25 to 30 people. So there's a wide range of representatives on that. There is district people on there, there's colleges, there's, there, there's a wide assortment. But to this point, is there a way of finding out, can we find out who some of those people are so that we can ask them and give them our input? I believe it's public information, so <clears throat> yes. So we can figure out how to get that information out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not on that group. No, this time. <laughs> no, I'm not either this time. So, well, if you give me the information, the information you can I'll, get it circulated. I'll get it circulated. Well, yep. I'll both with the district here in section three. Okay. Yes. Would there ever be the possibility of a fluency course that covered all of the curriculum and material for child abuse and prevention and that sort of there are some institutions that already offer that. But, uh, you know, as separate providers, they all, you know, to be a provider, you have to register with separate groups to do it. I'm sure if one of the <coughs> providers wanted to do it as one, they probably could. Yep. I mean, it's open. There's nothing that says no, that they can't. Can I ask you a question about the TCL, going back to that? What if the district never submitted a TCL for the coach? There's no documentation that they've been coaching. How does that work with the timeline for the coaching classes? If there's no certificate issued, when the first certificate gets issued is it when it starts at okay. five years. Yes? There's three different offices that deal with the workshop. So my office deals with the DASA. So there's information on our website about becoming an approved DASA provider. Um, the school violence is through student support, student student support services. services. So you would find that on the P to 12 website. And there's information about becoming an approved provider on that. If you actually went to our certification page and go to the links on our topics A to Z about workshops, 
There's a link there to each one of them, and you'll find through that link how to become an approved sponsor. Yep, because the Office of Professions actually does the child abuse. So they're all within <coughs> the department, but all different offices. Okay. Yeah, so new email field, clarification of email address. So on the statement, um, so when you put in a superintendent statement in TEACH, you used to be able to pick your district, okay? With picking your district, there are non-public schools that now can have coaching certificates and could not pick their school because it was not within that drop down in teach. So we had to go through our statements and pull out that drop down and ask for you to put in your district's name in there and to put the email address for our contact. And we did that, so if we have a quick question, we can just zip you off a quick email instead of having to write to the applicant and then get the applicant to contact you. So if there's something that we have a question on on the statement, we can just email you. Okay? So that's why we went that way on that particular item. Um, sports season and title specific. Do we know what that was? <coughs> oh, I, think on the I believe statement. Once, once the sport is over and then you're sending in the statement, Okay, this yep. is and the certificate's not issued. However, you want to make sure that the score is correct to the title that you're okay. making application yep. to. But to go back to what you had just said about the email, uh, a district had asked um, whose email am I to put in when they're doing a district statement as well? Is it the person, the staff, the support staff? inputting their email or is it you want the AD putting in that email? And that could be who, it could be one I mean, I, of I those. Just to them. I yep, <laughs> yep. So that email is somebody that we could contact with a question. You know, if it's a person that's putting in the statement that would be able to ask the question, that's great. If they want to put the AD in, that's great. And we can just send an email to them on that. Um, so on the sports season and title, within the TEACH system, if it's not the right level, that's okay. But if it's not the right sport, we won't issue the certificate. It is very important to make sure the statement is put on with the right sport. And there is a spot in there for date of employment. We're not looking for the first date you employed them. We're looking for the employment date for the year that you're requesting the certificate be issued for. So if we're looking for football of 2017, when did you employ them? Was it August 1st of 2017? I don't want to see that it was August 1st of 2015 because that doesn't really tell me the person is still in the district, okay? So that's what that field is for. Well, Ann, I'm just going to just state one thing. As far as my component districts or anyone that, that, that I'm going through coaching with that are uh, uh, non-public, I always go back and ask for the statement to be changed to the correct title of the certificate only because, believe it or not, and this has nothing to do with the staff at Albany or to the RCO office here, it's an easier transition if it's correct, okay? Absolutely. Yes? I was told that there's a glitch in teach with district statements. Some statements are not going through because of a glitch, so they have to manually be... All statements have to be manually associated to the application. That has always been a process, okay? You enter a statement, we have to manually review the certificate to make sure the statement matches the certificate. 
There's no other glitch that I know of. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm out of the line. She's out of the line. <laughs> Not the first time. That's about the play football. Do you think that wasn't what it was about? or? I had a coach who was pending, and the thing that we were told was holding up was a superintendent's statement. He put the statement in, uh, and Blaine had to go in and, and look at. Um, was the statement the in there, really? Do you remember? Well, I think it's more, I don't know where the glitch. That would have been as far as the statement go in, and then it was e evaluated, and then we had to put another statement in. And it just, yeah, and it has to go back through the process. If that's what the glitch is on the superintendent statement. Okay. So I, I can ask more on my staff on what they're, because nobody, Nobody has told me there's any glitches in the superintendent's statements for coaching, so I just need to find out what they're talking about. Okay? Thank you. Okay. So I don't know if there's any non-public schools here, but yes, we do. Have okay. There is access to teach. Every non-public school should have access to teach. They can request it through us um, if they haven't already. And within that access, you can have superintendent statements to enter for the coaching. And you have access to look up certificates and all of that. Okay? If you don't have access or only have one or two people that have access, there's a designation form on our website that needs to get filled out for additional access. And this is when we went to coaching for the public schools. We allowed another person to have access. Um, some districts, it's the athletic director, someone, it, someone it was a, a, another staff member that just needed to be able to get in to see and to enter statements. So we will consider another user for this purpose. Um, that is on our website if you just you know, in your Office of Teaching website, you'll look for teach authorization. You'll be able to find the form that we have to have filled out, and that can be emailed to us. Okay. Um, on to the next thing. Coaching applications, three years versus two evaluations. Um, gets into a... a all coaching applications, all applications within the TEACH system are disapproved after three years. So if you apply today and three years down the road, you haven't fulfilled your requirements for your certificate, TEACH will go through and disapprove your application. We've got it set up so it just does that every three years. Well, every month, yeah, anyways. Um, so there is part of the regulations talks about two evaluations, but two evaluations for a coaching certificate is a little bit different than anything else because we're talking about two complete evaluations. That means that we've got the documents in and we have written and we have requested additional information or something. Um, if the documents come in that second time around, and in coaching, in most cases, it doesn't happen that it gets dis disapproved on the second time. Technically, if we do a second evaluation, we can disapprove the application. A lot of times in coaching, we leave it on through the season. We try to, to make sure we can get the documents in within that season. Um, there are times when applications get disapproved. We can bring them back to life, provided they're not over three years old. Um, once an application has been evaluated, that means some type of document has showed up that we've actually reviewed, um, then you can't, the coach can still withdraw the application, but they won't get their money back. Because once a certificate has been evaluated, the fee has been used for that evaluation. Now I know historically, I see a lot of applications come in, and the coach doesn't, either doesn't get their documentation in. So that piece when I was talking about three years, 
every time I disapprove applications, there's a lot of coaching applications that the coach never fulfilled the requirements and they're getting disapproved. Whether they think they're going to get a job and apply and send something in and don't get a job, I'm not exactly sure what happens. Um, but once they're disapproved, you know, for aged out, if they need to apply, they have to reapply for them. Going back to the glitch, I remember. <laughs> Light bulb went off. Um, basically, the glitch is within the evaluation for evaluators. So when I see the district statement, okay, I, I believe this this is it. I can ask the question. Um, when you're evaluating, we cannot manually change. Yes, the district statement is in there. So when either an AD or support staff looks up on a coach's account, they're seeing that the district statement is still not there. That's the glitch that no, I No, that it hasn't been cannot, checked off. Correct. Met. We cannot yeah. we cannot do that right. in the system. Right. That was the glitch that people And that's not a glitch. Them. That was a built in procedure that that is when we get notified. We actually run um, lists out of teach to tell us when statements have been put in, but it's not every week. Um, this is actually something we've been working on for years to get corrected. And it might be corrected in the next couple of weeks that that'll pop an application back into ready for review again. And then we'll know to go and look at the application and associate statements. But those are something if you know of them, Oh, you're usually just emailing on them, you know, so that we get them and we put them together. Can you, Ann, will you just address and tell them why we go ahead and evaluate coaching applications as quickly as we might, um, even if we don't have the documentation, even if they tell us the documentation is coming based on your expectation of us? Okay. So we have set um, a rule in TEACH, and it works for several applications that when well, I ought to go back a little bit. The trigger in TEACH normally is to move an application into ready for a review as a transcript. As we all know in coaching, we don't require a transcript. So what we did is we made a rule that says, once a person's applied and paid their fee, the application goes into ready for a review. Okay, so that means one of our staff will look at it. So 90% of the time with coaching, we're actually doing an evaluation and sending that coach a letter before any documents have hit one of our offices. Because we have an expectation that those applications are reviewed within a couple of weeks. Okay? We're down to holding off between a week to two weeks for most of them now. Okay? So we're a whole lot faster than we've been in a long time, which means paperwork's not there. But that does not count as an evaluation, okay? That's our just first notice, here's what you need. Because people apply, they haven't always looked to see what the requirements are. So at least this letter gets to them, it's in their teach account, and it says this is what you need, A, B, C, and D. So we've given them that notice that says what they need to submit to us. Um, and that's you know, done between the BOCES and us, because we both get cases to evaluate. Okay. So the incorrect pathways. So we talk about incorrect pathways or incorrect titles. If somebody chose the wrong sport, we do not change sports, okay? They would have to reapply for the correct sport and just let us know and ask us to withdraw the one. We've run into a lot of problems with, you know, we go and change the sports and then they come back and say, no, I didn't want that, I wanted this. And so we want to make sure it's in writing from that person what they want to do. So they submit a new one and then request a withdraw and a refund of the wrong title. Now that's only titles. If they decided they're going from individual evaluation to the NHFS or the other way around, we will change pathways. All they have to do is let us know. 
there's an option on our uh, contact us where they can choose to change pathway and we can just move from one to the other. We also do that if we get, um, if they're in the individual evaluation and we get an AIC certificate, we'll change their pathway, okay? Or if they pick the NHFS and we're getting, you know, print or philosophies or something in. So that, we will do some of that ourselves but they can also request to change the pathway on them, but not the title. The sport is the sport. Or the level. Or the level, yes. So if they applied for second through fourth and needed a temporary, they have to come in and apply for that temporary. Okay, I talked about re reimbursement of application fee. If it really didn't have an evaluation because there were no documents in, they can still get their money back if they withdraw their application. Um, turnaround time, we talked about that. We're, uh, you know, first evaluations anywhere from one to two weeks. And then after that, it's the same, you know, as a new document comes in, it kicks it back into ready for review with the exception of the superintendent statement. Okay, the next question is what is considered a timely application before the season starts? Ideally, it would be great to have applications in anywhere from three to four weeks before the season and all the documents because then you will know when you go to start your season that that certificate should be issued. Um, as with all of us, there's at the beginning of the season, we see a lot of documents coming in and a lot of applications because, you know, <coughs> even with the RCOs, there's many districts that will be sending them in. The department is getting them from all over the state. So, you know, to get a good timely evaluation, three to four weeks is a, you know, would be a really good shot. Um, one to two, we may be able to do it. We do typically try to work on the sports that are coming up for that season. So in August, we're trying to do the football, we're seeing soccer, we're seeing, you know, whatever sports are coming in. You know, we work on those instead of working on the basketball or the softball or the baseball that somebody might have applied for. We really try to focus on the sports for that particular season. But a district still can apply Yes. Say a fall season for a winter sport. Yes. They can have their coach. They know he yep. or she is going to be coached. The sooner the applications get in, the happier we are. But it might take longer. Yes. Those might get put off just a little bit to get the other ones done. Okay. District athletic directors. Procedure. A nice ed instructor, first aid, CPR, and courses. Yes, basically, how to become approved to teach. There you go. That would be on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you're uh, if you have someone that's interested in being a first aid, CPR, AD instructor, contact me. Um, one of the things I had recently, and I, I won't get into the firestorm of it. But um, the, the, the person had like three years teaching. Um, we're looking for five years. I didn't write the rule. I'm following the rule. Because I always get that question, you know, what if they have three years? What if they have three and a half? I'm like, no, they have to have five. Just like you guys have to say, no, you have to have three years of evaluations. It's the same thing. Um, and I, again, I didn't write the rule. But that's what I try to follow the rule so I don't get in trouble. So. Um, I've had people try to complain against that, but but anyway, yeah. So to become a um, instructor, the, you know the person, whatever the agency can um, apply to me, basically, and I can give you the information how to do it. It's actually in the uh, coaching guidance. If you look in there, um, it is in there. So um, yeah, it, I, I mean it's a one-stop shop basically. I, you know, I do it all. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, and, and I'm looking for more people. I think I probably have 100 plus on there maybe, but we'd leave, you know, the more we can get, the better, you know? So I'm advertising. <laughs> Are you know anybody interested? That's good. Bring them in. But Carol, um, what, can you go through about how it may benefit the district also to have their 
be approved? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. If you have an internal candidate, like a person, like a nurse or a whatever, athletic trainer is a great fit, great at this stuff. Um, you know, it's great. I think it's better. Having to go through yeah, if he's having Red to go try to find a, uh, the American Red Cross course, right? Responding to emergency, which I just told you why it's hard to get that one, right? So, yeah, the more we have like that, the better. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Good advertisement. Um, the next one, clarification of certificate in order to be, this is interesting, an AD. It's actually physical education director, right? So in the regulation it says physical education director has to have a physical education certificate and also administrative certificate. Um, the athletic director piece, we're in conversation, I'll just, I won't get into it. We're in conversation with Alan Melanda and those guys, but it's just under discussion right now about athletic director requirements. Um, it's only, it's in discussion right now, okay? But the regulation, yes, does say is that certified and administrative cert certification. Um, the district could make it so that the person has to have an S SDL, right? <coughs> talking right mm -hmm. now? Yeah. So if they want to go more, you know, have more requirements for that person, they can. They could have an SDL. Okay? But that was just the director of PE, right? That's the director of PE. Off the street, correct? Yeah, not the yeah, not the guy off the street, right? The AD. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sad. Right? Um, but anyway, so um, that's what that is. So if you you know, again, if you have any further questions with that, I can email I have this like prepared email all the time to send you. You really need that in writing. Um, but that's what it is. And yes, district should have a phys ed director, okay? Athletic director, not required, but obviously if you don't have one, good luck. Um, <laughs> you know? But I think, you know, they have to have a phys ed director, okay? Um, all right. So any new regulations or procedures coming? Um, in terms of certification, I mean, that's something Ann could probably answer. I could probably speak all day of any amendments and things of like that. I don't want to bore you. Um, I do know there was a, for phys ed, what's that? Yeah. Um, for phys ed people, um, just so you're aware, there was a change in the um, 100.5, uh, where if, say, there's a fifth year senior, they don't have to, like, come back and take PE in their fifth year, okay? And then the other one was, if somebody transfers in from another state, say Florida, where they don't have phys ed, they are not required to make up that credit, right, of phys ed, but they would have to enroll in a PE class, okay? So I won't get deeply into that. And if you want the um, guidelines for that or whatever, you know, the, the information on that, I'd be more than happy to send that to you. But it's also on our, you know, it's on the site. Um, it's actually in my news site. Did you put the toolkit up there? We're trying to get the toolkit uh, back up here. You gotta get past the dog, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Jack Russell. My dog is Jack. Yeah, so. <laughs> I have to pass my dog to get to my dresser every morning. Um, yeah, so anyway, so um, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so in terms of regulations, that's the part that I'm, like I said, the most recent reg change that I'm aware of. Uh, for you know my people um, obviously there's other things that you know I could get more like I said I could be here all day talking about details but I don't want to bore you um, but anyway so what's the next one? Katie's goals um, I can Ian, did you want to touch base on yeah did you have any rights you want to talk so about? the only thing that I that we talked just a little bit about was possible changes in DASA otherwise I don't know of anything that's going through the legislature that may affect it. I haven't seen anything. I know every year we get a lot about medical issues and all of that that start through, but nothing has come through. So I, on our end, I don't have anything, which is good. I like that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I could go all day with, you know, concussion guidelines. We're looking at that. We're looking at, like, I have, I have in the hopper, the coaching guidelines to be reviewed, you know, it's been re I looked at it. I'm waiting for somebody else to look at it. Do you know what I mean? So there's all kinds of things, you know what I'm saying, every day going through the, the channels. But, but anyway, so yeah, so that's the latest one that I'm aware of. 
Um, this one, 80s goals, can, can uh, oh, look at that, there it is. So this is, uh, <laughs> I could switch to, you know, directions about two seconds, I get trouble with that. But anyway, so if you're looking at my uh, toolkit, <clears throat> uh, the way to get there, just Google or Yahoo, NYSCD, space, physical, space, education, space, toolkit, okay? I always tell people that every day. So when you get there, athletics and coaching, it's about the third scroll down. Um, and we got it so that you have, you know, the information about the NFHS, right? And then you get into guidelines for coaching requirements. Hopefully that'll be updated soon, I'm hoping. Um, course is accepted, right? August 2016, right? Then we get into the approved coaching courses information. If you have any, like I said, need updates, contact me. Um, competitive cheerleading, that's kind of old, but it's you know, still important. Um, and then we get into guidelines and things like that. But anyway, so, um, and I'm trying to keep it up to speed. Obviously, there's some old stuff on there too, but we'll probably get rid of some of that. Um, but some of the stuff is still important, you know. Um, somebody asked me too, I won't get into this totally, but are we working on the regs? Yeah, working on the regs right now with the SSA, taking a good look at that. Um, standards, starting to look at that for physical education, health ed in the future, uh, after phys ed. I'm a phys ed associate, I'm gonna work on phys ed first, right? And then we'll work on health ed, once we get a health ed person. Um, all right, so that's the site. We wanted to talk about that internship because one of these oh, yeah. was create a standardized coaching evaluation form. Yeah, so um, somebody wrote here, can, can NYSED create a standardized coaching evaluation form? Um, I mean, the one that we created here, if you look at this, it's very close related to the theory and technique course. I don't know if you checked that out, all right? But it's pretty much the same format, right? So somebody says, can we create a standardized one? Well, that's pretty standard. Um, I know a lot of you guys have your own internal evaluation forms, you know? But that's, I mean, that's a model. I don't know if you can call it standard, but a model. Yeah, a model. Right? Um, so anyway, so that's where we got that from, the theory and technique course, if anybody's wondering. Where is that, Daryl, on the toolkit? I've not seen that before. Yeah, that's in the toolkit. Yep, okay. it's right under the NFHS pathway. Our internship evaluation information yeah. form. It says new. I don't know if 2015 is new, but yeah. <laughs> it's new to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna update that, but I mean, it'll still stay exactly where it is. Yeah. Yep. Well. This one, the particular form does not have a spot for identifying information, so we will be adding that on there. In theory, this one gets, is for the NHFS internship. And the district would complete this, and then they have to send in this coaching experience verification, which is what we require is that coaching experience verification which has all the identifying info, you know, the spots for it here. So that, you know, as we're looking and if it's something everybody's interested in, we can take and, you know, I do, the, the piece I think neither of us want to do is for City District to have to use that evaluation. Right. It's out there if you think it's something you might want to. Because this does, hang up some of our coaches trying to get their professional um, coaching licenses because we'll get letters from districts to say we didn't evaluate the person and we go back and say you got to evaluate them because they can't get their professional or their renewal without evaluations because they have to be satisfactory evaluations. So we can, you know, take this and just update it, you know, with identifying information. And if you want to use it, you know, you could take it and use it. Yeah. Or we could, you know, maybe just put another one out there that looks somewhat similar and call it an evaluation. But by no means do we want to say you have to use it. It's just an option. Okay. Um, 
So the question, the, the, the B is about evaluations BCC to ADs. The answer to that is absolutely not. We've decided it's personal, private information on the evaluations for a certificate holder. The certificate holder can share them with you. You can see what's in TEACH, but we cannot provide you with them, okay? That was a decision that's been made many years ago and we're actually getting a little more harder on it right now um, because of you know everything that's going on with personal privacy. Um, so will nice at email reminders to coaches to apply for the next level? The answer to that is probably not because there's so many coaches that get one one year and don't come back that it's not something that we've put on our minds to do, especially with the temporaries. It's all about getting a position to coach. It's not about just getting a certificate because they have to have that employment before they can get the certificate issued. Okay, so we weren't gonna be doing that. Um, Coaching requirements to the toolkits. We're actually in the process of putting a coaching web page out there. Um, probably, I'm talking, maybe by the end of December it'll be up there, which I don't know if anybody's, we're gonna design it somewhat like our, we have actually a teaching assistant web page that is gonna be designed something like, which, we're going to go through all the levels, like this one's got a level one, what the requirements are, what a level two, you know, the, so it would be the temporary and then the first renewal, the second through fourth, and it's got information about each one of those. So we're working on um, designing a web page somewhat similar to this, and we try to put everything the person would need to know <coughs> on this page so there'll be links to everything. So there'll be links to Daryl's page in a couple of spots. We might be able to link back to that. Yeah, and when we talk about um, CPR, it'll go off to Daryl's CPR. First aid, it'll go off to there. And coaching, it'll go off to the approved courses. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a lot of links to the, the you know, back and forth with the pages. Um, so that, <laughs> Hopefully by the end of December, it may not be until sometime in January. Which means February. <laughs> Which means February. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I try to real. get things I'm done in January. Real, you know? That's I always a say slow time December for us. means usually January. Okay. So the next one's you. Oh, is it? Volunteer coaching license. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, um, this. No, I, I think I mentioned this before. I mean, volunteers are considered a coach. I mean, whether they're volunteer or not. Um, I'm like, why aren't they paying you? But, but anyway, so, <laughs> why are you working for free? But um, no, I get it, you know. I mean, <laughs> go work for Little League, right? You wanna work for free, go work in Little League. Um, but anyway, so, no, I'm usually encouraging them to, you know, like I said, you, you, you have to have the requirements. I mean, like I said, you're working with the students, We've had this question, like I said, a thousand times. Why, you know, because they're working with the students and you can tell them that. That's what it is. Um, well, it'd be great if that was actually on that, you know, page you were talking about. Yeah, we probably should put it in bold letters, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, <laughs> coaches, non-volunteers. We don't you know, get very okay. many calls on that at all anymore. Yeah, once in a while. The word's out there. Yeah. But, yes? question about teaching assistants. Yes. Now explain that again to me. I'm sorry. Teaching assistants. Yeah. They go through the third category where they have to have the temporary coaching license. Yes. Why is that? Because they don't have the skills that a teacher has. When they're okay. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> So um, when we looked at who could be a non-teacher coach, we looked at their educational requirements of the individual. And that's why we came up and said, teachers, pupil personnel, school leaders, all have a set of educational requirements 
that help them to <coughs> work with the students, all their pedagogical coursework, um, experiences. Teaching assistants don't have to have any of that. Okay? Are teaching assistants certified? Yes. But to be certified, the, they, there's no requirements other than a high school diploma and then college credits in anything. Okay? So, I mean, the department spent a lot of time looking at this and they had decided that TAs were not among one that would be considered a non-teacher coach. So, so then they're okay to work with kids all day during school, but not after school coach. Yep. <laughs> but they don't work independently. Remember that. They cannot work independently. They have to be under the supervision. A coach doesn't have to be under the supervision. Yes? Um, could you just tell me for the volunteers, you mentioned they would need to have DASA and fingerprinting. Um, what other requirements, I know you said they need all of the requirements, would you mind just listing them because um, I So the volunteers, if they're coaching, have to get a coaching certificate. It's like a non-teacher coach. Right, they're a non-teacher coach. What level of coaching They start with the temporary and go all the way up through. For and all volunteers and? Yep. Okay. Yes. Did she pick up one of these? Did you oh. pick up one of these? Yes. Your, your requirements are listed right okay. up there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's the same requirement for any non-teacher coach. For all volunteers. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. From a personal perspective, has the kind of any thought to changing the professional structure and bringing it more in line with like the teacher direction? And what I mean by that, so a teacher, we typically get them if they have an initial certificate. And they have five years, and then they have a bunch of requirements they have to take care of, and then their professional certificate. So that progression makes very good sense personnel wise. I think for coaching, it's, you know, the personnel piece of it, it is very um, cumbersome, I guess what I would say, for all of the renewals. So for all of the steps in the renewals, particularly the temporary second through fourth renewal, that we do those, you know, three or four years in a row. And that whole stage seems like one stage to us, some of us. So, I mean, is there any thought to that changing the progression You're saying, now there's a stage in there that's like a three year long stage. And then the next one becomes professional. So I think part of this is, so let's go back and think. The teacher that's on a temporary, or the, excuse me, the non-teacher coach that holds a temporary, technically, can one year coach because they found a job, the next year maybe not because a teacher wants it, okay? So there, there's, I gotta think of my wording on this. There, there's no guarantee that they'll work every year because they might not be able to find a coaching position. So that's why they went to a one year for the temporaries, okay? So that you have the flexibility that I found a job this year. I got a certificate. I'm not stuck to that five years now and gee, I can't find a job, or, you know, a coaching job for year two, three, four, or five. What do I do? Okay? So this gave them some flexibility. I can do it this year, maybe another sport next year, or maybe something else the year after. Um, so that's from my conversations way before you got here. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember that one. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I wonder, because one angle on that, for teachers, they have the same scenario. So if somebody is initially certified and they don't have a job, you know, then it's their responsibility. They apply for an extension of that initial certificate. They might, they might go three years and not have a job, and they apply for an extension. Right. When they get a job, they then go through that five-year process. Right. Um, so it, you know, it, it might be, it, it could link up the two but then we get into when courses are required so there I mean there is differences okay um, I don't know if that's something you'll entertain or I can see a lot of issues from our end running into this so I just don't know 
Yeah. Well, we'll take it back so, and think about it. Yeah, it's it. one to bring back. I mean, yep. you know. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is there any real good reason why the, the licensees have to be sports specific? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could look at it two ways. I, I hear you. But I think, like, if you're, you know, like, if, I, I've seen, like, like I said, some of the courses, even the NFHS courses, are very good for somebody who's been around for a long time. They're very specific to what their needs are, you know, and there are very specific needs to each individual sport. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, I mean, football is not the same as gymnastics. Do you know what I mean? So, and I, I hear you. It's you know a lot of a lot of the stuff is general. Well, again, I mean, good points, but like I said, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of volunteer, I won't go into that, that argument, but I think that in terms of, like I said, a sport-specific sport, I think, it, I think that's better sometimes than the general one in terms of, you know, like I said, I think it's important for a person to have sport specificity. At least picking up the extra sports, you only have to do the extra three hours, not Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Are TCLs uh, okay. district specific? So if a coach got a temporary coaching license in one district, it was withdrawn at the end of that year. Coach in another district never got a uh, TCL there, has been coaching, and has still has not received a TCL. Uh, if I, if I it, it's me, I'm speaking about myself. Um, if I were to get that this year, would the five years start over, or was it because of that initial TCL that I got back in 2012? That would be the one that would count, yep. even though I haven't gotten one since. Yep. Okay. That very first one you got, regardless of what sport it was, okay. that's that's your starting point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that starts your five-year clock for all courses, even if you go into a different sport. <coughs> Are there any other questions for Anna and Dara?